hello my amazing people of god and welcome back to gloria emmanuel god bless every one of you my old subscribers god bless you my year to join the family i appreciate every one of you god bless every one of you abundantly please as you're subscribing to this channel i want you to subscribe to you that's something for which they mock you that's the same thing god will lay hand on and elevate you The wall of Jericho fell down flat. The wall of Jericho fell down flat. When the children of God were praising the Lord, the wall of Jericho fell down flat. Wonderful, wonderful brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Call for a Purpose. Formerly known as Gloria Emmanuel. My brothers and sisters, I don't know the wall of Jericho in your life. But today, as he stand, or as he stood in the days of Rehab, so shall it be to you that doors will be open. That an act, one single act of kindness is going to open the door of remembrance for you. I don't know the situation, I don't know the circumstances, but that very country that have refused to accept you as a worthy candidate, as a worthy citizen, after acting according to the will and the, the purpose of God, the mercy of God will speak for you. And that country is going to accept you as their citizen like it happened in the days of Rahab, irrespective that she was a harot. And not only that, uh, uh, Rahab was counted worthy to become a Jew by citizenship, she was counted in the lineage of Jesus Christ. So I don't know that situation around you. I don't know that circumstances around you. But I am here to challenge that situation. And I'm here to speak that situation. To say situation, still be still. Because the power of God is moving in action. Let us back it up with the word of God in the book of Hebrew chapter 11 verse 31. He said, by faith, the herald Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. One kind of, one act of kindness delivered this lady. But remember that this lady as well did something. She did not just do this. She did not just hide these people. After he hid them, he demanded something. He requested something. Are you keeping quiet waiting on God? Or are you requesting something from God? God said, challenge me by my word. Speak to death this situation. Speak to that mountain. Speak what you want into being. It is this year, 2022. Speak to that situation. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that sickness. Speak to that medical record. Speak to that very joblessness. Speak to that business that are dying down. And say, today, receive life. Because the Bible say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth needs to speak. And if you speak positively, it will work out positively for you. But if you speak negatively, it will work out negatively for you. After Rahab did what Rahab did to the spy that was sent by Joshua, he turned around and said to them, please, I urge you, do not destroy me and my household with these people. Save my family, save my people, save my parents, save my siblings. Because I know that your God is going to destroy this country and that this country has been handed over to you. Even though he was a hero, but he understood the time and the season. Very simple. Young people, let me say this to you. We are gathered here from all over Nigeria. We are seated, everybody by the side. We will listen everybody to the same speakers as you're listening to me right now. You will listen to everybody. But it is not everybody that the words will be effective in their lives. It is going to be effective for the person 
who listens and decides that the prophecies on his head will not go in vain. This is University of Nigeria and Soka. Several years ago, I came to this school as a student. Before I came to this school as a student, I was physically challenged at the age of three. And between the ages of three and ten, I was a beggar in my village. Everybody knew me. I was crawling on the floor for seven good years. I would hang something on my neck. I would go to the marketplace to beg. That was what I was doing for seven years. And for these seven years, all my age mates were already in school. I was despised. I was nobody. Until one day, I decided to go to school. And when I got to school, the headmaster made a mockery of me and said to my father, why did you bring this one here? What did he come here to do? He said to my father, he can't be a student. So take him back home. He can't be a student. And then I asked the man, what will I do? If you want to maximize who you are in life, you don't tell stories of what has happened to you. You tell stories of what will I do to come out of what has happened to me? That's the question. So I asked the man, what will I do? He said, go and learn how to walk. And for one year, I was learning how to walk with this stick. And I will take a step and I will fall. Young people, listen to me. On the journey to success, you're going to fall several times. But when you fall, you're going to get right back on your legs. You're going to write an exam several times. But you won't give up until you pass that exam. You're going to go for interviews several times. You're going to be rejected. But each time they reject you, you return. You're going to set up businesses several times. You're going to make mistakes. But a mistake does not define who you are. And so from primary school, working with a stick, I came to this University of Nigeria and Soka. And when I entered this school, life was a hell for me. No money to eat, nothing. And then, to make matters worse, I didn't have a leg to work with. I was telling my driver that brought me that I used to walk from Six Flats to Akintola Hostel with this stick in my hand. Why? Because I wanted to prove somebody wrong. I knew I might be physically challenged, but that is not who I am. I know that you might not be beautiful according to people's standards, but that's not who you are. I know you might not be as rich as others, but that's not who you are. I know that you might not come from the greatest of families. Young person, that's not who you are. So I came in here, and then I had a terrible experience after I lost my dad. A lecturer, I went to ask him a question in the class. And this man said to me, bring the question to the class. I want everybody to gain from this question. So I came to the class and he said to me, come and stand in front of the class at the mass communication department at the faculty of arts here. So I stood in front of the class and this man looked at me and said, you asked me a question. I said, they said, let me ask you questions too. He said to me, when you were entering the university, where did you pass? I said, sir, I passed through the university gate. He said, when you were passing, who did you see? I was wondering, what was the need? I said, sir, I saw the transporters. The Okada people said, yes. Who else? I saw the security people. Yes. Who else? I saw those hawking. He said to me, think very well. Who else did you see? I said, sir, I saw those who were begging. He said, describe them for me. So I described them to him. I said, some of them are blind. Some of them are physically challenged. This lecturer pointed me in my face and said to me, that's where people like you stay, at the gates. He said to me, pack your things. Go to the gates. Sit at the gates and beg. He said to me, you will never become anything. Your place is at the gates. He said to me, look around the class. Is there anybody with a stick in their hand? He said, pack. Listen to me, child of God. Young people, listen. Life is not about the container, but the content. Life is not about the container. It's not about how tall you are. It's not about who you think you are. What are you do? What is inside of you? What prophecy are you carrying? What dream are you carrying? Can I share to you? I left this school with a first class. Listen to me, young people. I left this school with a CGP of 4.86. Listen to me, young people. Today as I stand here, I have a PhD. I am a lecturer and I teach in two different schools. I have cars that I drive on my own. I have family, I have a wife and children. Listen, child of God, 
Nobody is your classmate. You are your own. Nobody should influence you. Hey, young person, listen to me. You are not in competition with anybody. By the special grace of God, I have traveled around the world. The last time I got to UK, I got to London Heathrow Airport with the same stick in my hand. That's something for which they mock you. That's the same thing God will lay hand on and elevate you. Do not Thank you for watching. If the video interests you, please share.